I've been doing plenty of reading, research and analysis, basically a lot of Excel work on stock market outlook for 2023. And I've decided to summarize all of that for you. So note down these five points. One, there are plenty of signs that inflation is peaking. In other words, the rate of increases in consumer prices that you and I face when you go out shopping or pay for services is falling back down. But an even greater aspect of that is that the numbers are coming down below market expectation. So they are actually surprising the market in a positive way. Although the actual number itself is still still very high actually um, but the outlook is that it will start to fall back down towards end of this year but still remain high but next year is when we're actually likely to see a lot more normalization of inflation rate for the developed world so for companies and the stocks it basically means the input cost or the cost of doing business is likely to stay higher putting a lot of pressure on the profit margin so market analysts or the sell side guys they're very likely to start derating and downgrading a lot of companies, especially if they're not meeting their earnings forecast as expected. One good way for us to actually understand or get a good grasp of what's happening on the floor to in these companies is to look at PMI index. PMI stands for Purchasing Manager Index, and they give a very real-time picture of what is happening on the ground right now in terms of cost to businesses, new orders that they're getting, and the delivery time. So when I was doing some work on this topic, what I realized is that the PMI index works pretty well as a leading indicator when it comes to growth in company profit or earnings. So what do I mean by that? Say that the current PMI number has fallen drastically from past month, and it's been trending down for a couple of months in a row. So that means that all is equal, and in a very, very simplistic way, it may give guidance that company profitability in a couple of months time will also moderate. The PMI values should be freely available across different uh, markets such as UK, US, emerging market, China and so forth. And the way to read this, uh, well, before you read this, the way to find this would be to just Google it and you should be able to find the current reading and some commentary as well um, alongside that to give you a bit more flavor as to what's going on. And it will also mention that the way to read it should be really simple. So any number above 50 means that the industry is in an expansionary environment. So things are uh, looking pretty good. Any number below 50 means that it's in a contractionary environment. So things are not looking very good. And when it's in contraction, it means that company revenue, profitability will likely to come under pressure over the coming months. But on the flip side, the good news is that when that happens, it will again, obviously, offer you or investors some opportunity to buy or invest in a market of your choice. And the second point is that due to the nature of inflation, the uncertainty around it, and also the, you know, the understanding that we're likely to have a global slowdown in growth or a recession, the R word, um, what that means is that the central banks are also under a lot of pressure. And this pressure will likely to stay on again for a little bit longer. You see, back in 2021, central banks got a lot of beating for getting it wrong. So what that means is that now they have turned frantically hawkish. They're going to do everything. They are doing everything in their power to tame inflation. And you can see that by the amount of rate hikes that they have been delivering. Anyway, focusing back on the stock market, a high level of interest rate is basically not good um, for the current company value or valuation. But when I look into the uh, implied policy rate, so the policy rate that the market is expecting over the coming months, what I see is a very, very tired stock market analyst and participant. They are ready to start pricing in a rate cut, so um, cutting interest rate from the tail end of this summer. That just tells me that the market really don't believe that the central banks can keep rates higher for longer or even increase it by a lot more over the coming months without compromising the real economy. So in that sense, and if you believe that the market will be right, then over the summer, towards the tail end of the summer, we should start to see some reversal in the stock market performance. And this brings me to my third point, which is really to mention that expect volatility to continue. Why? Well, mainly because of the tension that the developed world is facing uh, between the government and the monetary policy, so the fiscal and the monetary policy. In one hand, the government is trying to stimulate the economy, take the energy price cap guarantee, for example, in the UK, uh, while at the same time, in the opposite direction, the monetary policy or the Bank of England is 
you know, hiking rates to tame inflation. They're sort of working in opposite direction and creating a lot of friction in the real economy. And as this tension continues, the market is really observing what's going on and they have come to a decision on what is the best outcome for the market. And what the market really wants is the rate hikes to stop or stop going up, which is why over the past couple of months, bad economic news have actually turned into a good positive news for the stock market. The front page of FT today, as I record this video, I think speaks volume to show exactly what I mean by this. Now, given the uncertainty and volatility in the stock market, my fourth point is to focus on investing in companies or a market that generate a stable level of income or has a stable, good level of profit margin. So companies that have proven to be resilient by increasing their dividends year after year for many years, even during recessions, will be king. One such index of interest would be the Dividend Aristocrat Index. You have that both in the US and UK. It's basically an index of companies or stocks that have successfully grown their dividends year after year for many years. And my fifth and final point on equities outlook would be to start looking into Asia and emerging market. As China finally reopens, there will likely to be a positive spillover effect to other regions or other countries. So when China was under its strict zero COVID policy, their consumers, so their people didn't really spend, so consumption was down. And as a result, Chinese imports took a big hit, as you would expect, which is bad uh, for China's trading partners, so other countries that actually export their product to China. But as China reopens and the demand starts to come back up again, it would be good news for those countries that generally used to export a lot of things to China. Ever since the 2018 trade war between US and China, what the data shows is that a lot of trade of China has actually happened within Asia. So China now prefers to do a lot more trading um, within countries around the country rather than doing um, with US. So one of the beneficiary of China reopening would be those Asian countries. And it's not just Asia, it's also true for some of the commodity exporting countries, um, which you can find in LATAM, such as Brazil, for example. The China reopening, some of this factory is gonna open and they're gonna go back to doing business as usual. And suddenly the demand um, for some of the commodities such as iron ore, uh, oil is gonna start to come back up again and that's going to benefit those country that um, exports um, those commodities to China. So this is a pretty interesting area that I think is worth investigating a bit more. But overall, um, another point to mention on emerging market is that um, as the US dollar um, starts to depreciate or come down in value as it has been over the couple of months, this will actually be a good thing for emerging market overall. So all in all, I think that equities will stay under pressure at least until the tail end of summer. But there are three things to look out for, which would um, kind of give the turning point in equities for it to start doing well in a more sustainable manner. And these three points are peak in rates, so stop in central bank rate hikes, more downside inflation surprises for the market, bottoming out of growth momentum, or improvements in PMI index. Do let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my stock market outlook for this year in the comment section below. But that's all for today and until next time, do look after yourself and your money.